All right, guys, before I start taking apart the Can-Am, I thought I'd show you what comes inside a Can-Am bought winch here. So you get your operator's guide. It comes with uh, some information on how to access a website that'll show you step-by-step -step on how to install this winch. You also get to your winch remote controller. They provide you plenty of zip ties, which I think is cool. You also get to your uh, hook rope, your hook, your hook stopper. They provide you, of course, with the uh, red and black uh, cables to hook up this winch. You get uh, your hardware right there, so that way you could go ahead and safely mount everything. They provide you with the uh, solenoid uh, mount. Of course, you get your solenoid right there. And then uh, up here, you got uh, the circuit breaker box, your circuit breaker. Uh, you get uh, your fair lead, and then, of course, your yellow and blue cables that run into your uh, winch right here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Here is the Can-Am that the winch is actually going to be installed on. If this is your first time installing a winch, there really isn't a whole lot to it. It just requires basic mechanical skills as well as basic electrical skills. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take off the seat, disconnect the battery, take off this right fender, and also take off the uh, fender underneath here that is also the uh, engine guard. So let's get started. So I start with uh, removing the uh, black side first, so that way uh, any current that's flowing through the system is immediately discharged. And uh, from there, you usually want to separate that with a little uh, cardboard or something, so that way there is uh, no possibility that uh, that negative gets back on and you know starts to charge the system back up. So yeah, removing that black first will also save. Uh, any uh, shortages that may happen from uh, uh, unwanted contact. To remove these uh, little plastic rivets, you just use a flathead screwdriver, get underneath it right there, and uh, just pull it out. I set all my stuff in a small Tupperware so that way I don't lose any pieces. And I grab a needle nose to finish uh, pulling out the other half of the uh, plastic rivet. When you're working on the fender on the engine, there's seven pull rivets that need to be pulled out. Alright, so all the rivets are pulled out. Now let's just go ahead and take this out of the uh, ATV here. Of course, you've got to work with the wheel, but uh, yeah, it's out. So, one step further. And again, you know, keep all your stuff in a Tupperware, that way you're not going to lose any pieces that are small as this size right there, so. So the next step in this process is let's go ahead and take off the center console by giving this a good firm tug. And uh, we'll set this off to the side. Next is we're going to take off this uh, dash kit right here. So. Just fill underneath the front right here. You should fill it kind of like a click and just give it a firm pull up and then it comes right off. Now we should have access to go ahead and remove uh, this uh, side fender, but uh, there's one little uh, screw that needs to come out first. So we're going to go ahead and take that out first. So there is one rivet more that needs to come off. I didn't realize there was a rivet right here, but uh, if you own a Can-Am, there's a rivet right there that needs to be pulled out. And uh, once we pull that out, we should go ahead and be able to pull off the uh, side fender right here. So let's take that out and get going. Alright guys, so I finally pulled this rivet off. It's a little challenge to get out and I think it was just the uh, mud that was kind of stuck in behind the uh, rivet right there. I usually have my bike clean before working on it, but uh, that's okay. However, if you break these rivets, which this one isn't badly broke as you can see, 
uh, you could go down to your local auto store or even your local dealer and pick up a pack of these. They're not very expensive at all. All right, so now that that plastic rivet's out on the uh, side there, this shouldn't be too uh, big of a challenge to pull out. So, yeah. That, there we go. Awesome. Okay, guys, I'm going to mount the Fairly next. So I'm going to use a uh, half-inch socket to get behind so that way it could uh, hook onto that nut. And then I need an Allen wrench to go ahead and pull this out. So let's go ahead and take this off. So you'll probably no longer need these because everything on that winch comes uh, with its own set of uh, bolts and stuff like that. So let's take this one off as well. Pretty easy to take off. But uh, again, I like to keep spare parts so these never get tossed out. I always keep them just because it seems that uh, I find a place to use these later down the road. So one thing you're going to want to make note on if you're installing a Can-Am winch on a Can-Am is you need to take off the roller here so that way you could go ahead and feed through some of this cable before you actually mount uh, your fair lead up here. So to take off the bottom roller you're just going to use a uh, 16 millimeter for both sides uh, to go ahead and take off that nut and bolt. And then you're going to want to go ahead and free up your uh, free spool right here by unlocking it and uh, pulling through some cables. So I'm going to need both hands for that. So I freed up some of that cable, pulled it through the uh, fair lead hole. Now I just need to put it uh, through the fair lead itself. And then uh, once I get some cable through that, then I need to go ahead and uh, mount on that uh, roller again. And then go ahead and mount the uh, fair lead here to the two holes that are uh, with the uh, Can-Am already. So a cool thing about uh, Can-Ams, uh, they already have it pre-designed where you could just go ahead and plug and play which is why I went with the uh, Can-Am winch in the first place so I know on the uh, Polaris winch that I installed I had to go ahead and mount in a winch plate up in here and do a few other steps that uh, yeah Can-Am just makes that uh, unnecessary so let's go ahead and get this uh, fair lead in and move on to the next step Okay, so the fair lead and winch are mounted. There really isn't a whole lot to it. You just push through the bolt right there, and then you get access with the nut right around the uh, plastic here, and so you tighten that up. Same thing on this side. You just line up the two bolts. And then uh, down here, you just uh, line up your holes right there with your bolts, and then you just go ahead and tighten down these two on the uh, right side, and again, these two on the uh, left side, and that's it. So when you're doing a winch job, it's important to remember that uh, you mount your fair lead first and feed through your cable, and then you work on your winch, because if you do it the other way around, you're gonna have to take out your winch to get access to uh, the two nuts that need to go on your fair lead behind there. So yeah, just uh, keep a note on doing that for a winch install. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and put our hook on. First, we're going to want to put our uh, hook stopper on. Then let's put on the uh, hook here. And then you're going to want to feed that pin through. And put on your little uh, pin right here so that uh, other pin doesn't pop out or cottering pin, whatever you want to call it. 
So go ahead and just push it over with your finger as best as possible. If you need a pair of pliers, use a pair of pliers, but uh, these aren't too hard to bend. In fact, the other side of things is they break just as easy, but uh, yeah, takes a lot to kind of break them, even though I, I said that uh, they break just as easy. So that's it right there. Uh, you still need to pull it back some, but uh, I'll take a pair of pliers or some channel locks to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and lock this off with the pair of needle nose here. So that went back. Same thing, grab the other side and uh, just work it all the way back. And that's pretty much it. Last thing here is let's go ahead and put on our uh, hook rope. There you go. All right, now that the uh, fair lead and winch is all mounted, now it's time to move into uh, putting on this solenoid bracket. So I ran into a little bit of a problem here. And uh, yeah, this is, you know, real life situations that happen. Nothing goes perfect sometimes. So that hole that you see right there, I actually have to mount part of this uh, bracket to it to uh, go ahead and put my solenoid there. So the original bolt that came with uh, Can-Am's winch, the head of that bolt snapped off and all it did is leave the body of that bolt in there. So I tried to extract it with some bolt extractors and nothing worked. So I finally ended up uh, taking a titanium drill bit and just drilled that whole uh, area out. And then I went down to uh, Tracker Supply and picked up a little hardware so that way I could continue uh, mounting this uh, solenoid bracket. But yeah, part of that uh, bracket needs to have access to that top shock right there. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that in and move on. But yeah, this is a real life uh, situation and uh, I was so frustrated. I didn't do any uh, filming of it. So just take my word that uh, I was uh, shooting some steam off and uh, yeah, I didn't want to capture any of that on camera. But uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay, so let's go ahead and take off that uh, nut right there that's on the uh, shock so that way you can mount that bracket. Went ahead and loosened it up uh, prior to uh, showing you guys this. So don't go ahead and think that's easy to take off. It's really not. But uh, once you take off the original nut that came with the Can-Am, you're going to want to put on the uh, nut that came with the uh, winch. So uh, let's go ahead and put this uh, bracket in there and uh, mount that in there. So yeah, it's supposed to fit in there just like that. And then uh, you can see where that hole mounts up right there. That's where I need to put in that uh, new uh, hardware bolts uh, setup that I purchased. So let's get that in there. Don't know if I'm going to be able to show you uh, how that goes in there because I'm going to need both hands, but I'll show you guys what it looks like uh, right afterwards. Okay, guys, my headache is over. So uh, this is on there mounted. The one thing I have to do is uh, tighten up that nut right there. Sorry I couldn't show you guys. It's a tight area through here, but uh, the only difference having to do with this route versus doing it uh, the way it should have been intended is having to drill that uh, hole out. It was pre-threaded uh, on the frame already. So drilling this out just a little bit bigger, I only had to put a bolt through there with the nut. And so I was able to access that nut just from right underneath. And so I put a eight millimeter uh, wrench on there and just tighten it up here with the socket. So yeah, it was really smooth and easy. So if this ever happens to you, uh, Can-Am owners, uh, yeah, this is a pretty quick and easy fix. So the bolt's an uh, inch and a quarter long and uh, works fine. So yeah, it's on there snug. So let's get this tightened up and uh, probably gonna run the electrical next and then uh, probably mount that solenoid after I get the electrical all connected. All right, so these are the final turns on uh, mounting that uh, nut back onto the uh, shock up here. Again, uh, Can-Am sent their own uh, socket. The original one on there was a bronze piece, so this one is uh, silver. So yeah, this is all complete. Just gonna give it one final turn. Yeah, that's good. I don't wanna keep turning it anymore, so uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Let's move on. All right, so let's go ahead and get on our first wires to the uh, winch here. So these are already loose, so it shouldn't uh, be any problem to get these off. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take off the blue one. And you got the uh, yellow one as well.
So you're gonna to wanna to take off one washer, leave one washer, and I didn't do that on the other side. So let's take that off as well. And uh, for, for Ken Am, they already have the uh, wire with the boot on there, but if you bought a winch and you're trying to hook this up and your uh, wire doesn't have the boot on, make sure you put that boot on first because you're gonna hook this up and then have to take it off to put that boot back on. So this is the blue side right here. And uh, let's put on that washer. There we go. Easy enough. And then I'll tighten that up uh, here in a little while so that way I know uh, how I need to run that wire so that way we can start zip tying it. But uh, it's on there for now. And let's go ahead and apply this uh, yellow wire. So yeah, on winches you got one side that's blue and the other side is yellow. And that runs into your solenoid. And uh, from your solenoid you run into your uh, battery. Alright, there we go. For a second there, it felt like it was going to slip out of my hand there. So yeah, that, that's it right there. Now let's go ahead and run these wires and hook them up to your solenoid. Actually, instead of jumping too far ahead, I think I should probably run those wires through so that way uh, I know exactly where it's going to go through so I can put the solenoid that's going to be right up in there and uh, you'll see it from the other side. So far, this is what I've done. I have ran the uh, electrical up through here. I'm gonna zip tie it to uh, the side of the fan. It's uh, free from being hit by the fan. So I've also ran the wire up and around the frame back through there. You can't really see other than uh, right in there. It's real dark in there. So I have everything connected to the solenoid uh, as far as winch to solenoid. Now I've started to run the wire from solenoid to a battery so I have it fed through here and uh, it's coming around and so I've connected the uh, circuit breaker which is uh, really easy and then again that circuit breaker rests inside of this uh, hard plastic so that's where I'm at right now as soon as I get everything the way it needs to uh, go I'll uh, zip tie it along the uh, existing uh, wiring that's on the uh, Can-Am and so I'll show you what that looks like when it's all done, but I just want to show you guys the uh, the raw format right now. Okay, so moving further on on how I've started to uh, pre-wire this, I fed the wire following this path of line right there. And so when you come back around over here, you can see how it came up and around the backside. I have a zip tie that's already pre-set. Uh, uh, another one right here, and it just continued to follow the existing wire. But uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the uh, handlebar uh, remote controller. And uh, just kind of looking at uh, what everything uh, that needs to go with it, uh, I'm supposed to plug it in back in here somewhere. So it looks like I'm going to have to take off this uh, screw, which is part of the uh, uh, what do you call it the air filter right there so underneath it I should be able to uh, plug in some clips and then from there I can run the rest of the wire uh, follow some type of path I'm not sure what I'm gonna do and then I could run it to the uh, solenoid and then I just need to put everything back together and I think we should be done so let's get into this one all right guys I just want to show you what happened for the uh, remote wiring so Here's the actual uh, controller. I did uh, place some of the uh, bracket on there. It's still loose. I need to tighten that up, but uh, that's on there nonetheless. But uh, I ran this wire down through here. So it's going to be a uh, uh, zip tied to the uh, uh, handlebars, but uh, the cord goes down in through here and it's fed out just underneath right through here. So with this uh, remote, Right here, that, that white plug-in right there, that's a dead uh, plug-in. So uh, the actual uh, live wire is plugged in right there. So it's kind of interesting, but uh, this 
uh, plug-in was actually plugged into this white one. So we just basically swapped out and now this one uh, electrical here that's plugged into the white, which is a, a dead uh, hookup, that is if you want to plug in a, like hot heads or some other type of accessories. So pretty much all we did is a swap out for the uh, electrical right there. Now I want to give credit to my wife. She uh, has small hands, so she was able to uh, actually get in there and plug in those for me. So yeah, I appreciate it. My hands are just too uh, too fat to get in there. But uh, yeah, it's going to look sharp once you get the uh, wiring all hooked up right there. But I just wanted to kind of show you uh, what took place just because uh, it's hard to get in there with the camera and your hands so that's the explanation right there still need to tighten up uh, on the solenoid uh, and get everything uh, situated still need to pull off those zip cords uh, but yeah we are really right at the final step so it's just a matter of tightening some bolts finishing off those zip ties connecting the battery back and actually tightening up the uh, the remote control up there so yeah let's get this all done and uh, let's go have a pull test at the end of this all right guys so I've just finished up uh, tightening on the electrical to that solenoid so now that everything's tight on that solenoid you can see where the screws already sticking out I need to go ahead and mount this uh, solenoid to that hole right there and there's a hole right there as well so that's it for the solenoid and then I need to tighten off the uh, winch bolts. All right, just got done mounting the uh, solenoid, so now let's hook up the uh, green and black. So the black should go to uh, the right side over here. Need to pull through some slack. There we go. So yeah, let's clip in that uh, black. Come on. There we go. Clip in the uh, green over here. Ugh. Come on. There it is. So that's done all through there. Just need to tighten up uh, the winch bolts here, or nuts, and then uh, put on these boots. And then uh, I'll go worry about the uh, remote control over here for the uh, winch. So, yeah. I'm super excited to give this a test. All right, guys, the uh, witch job is actually done. So the last thing you saw me doing was up there with the uh, remote control, which I'll show you guys here uh, in just a moment. But uh, everything's done here. So the remote control wiring goes down the steering wheel column, comes right through here, and it's fed right through here. And then it comes down underneath here and it's uh, tapped into the uh, solenoid. So I went ahead and uh, uh, zip tied off the uh, winch wiring. And of course I told you that it was following the existing uh, wiring there on the uh, Can-Am. So when you come over here, you can see how it looks real sharp uh, running along the existing uh, wiring over here on the Can-Am already. So I'm already plugged into the battery. Didn't show you guys that. I figured that's pretty self-explanatory. But I did have to work around the existing wiring that I have over here for uh, my floodlight combo light. So let's go over here and uh, show you how that remote sits up here on the uh, handlebars. So looks pretty good right there. It is a little over and out of the way, but that's okay. If you're going to be using it, you're definitely not going to be uh, touching with any of this stuff right here. But let's turn it over and see uh, if we get a some power on this winch. So let's see if I could do this here. Yep. That right there guys is what I like to call the moment of truth and the moment of truth is did all your work work and uh, yeah so let's put this back together and uh, yeah, let's go outside and see if I could pull my truck with it. And uh, yeah, let's go have some fun with this winch. Just a quick little test and see how it pulls a Ford 150. Hey guys, it's the day after installing the uh, 3,500 pound HD Can-Am winch off the uh, Can-Am website. So uh, I didn't show you guys any of the uh, steps involved as far as putting back on the uh, plastics. 
I figured it's pretty much the reverse of what I did in the beginning. It's just a matter of putting on that side fender, it's push rivets, and of course the uh, console area up there, and then the one screw that was right in there, and then the push rivet that was pulled out right through here, and of course uh, hooking up the uh, battery wires under there, which is pretty much all uh, self-explanatory. It's just a matter of positive to positive, negative to negative, and then uh, getting that to all uh, plugged back in. But yeah, if you watch the video all the way through, it's just the reverse steps. Now, I have my uh, Ford 150 out there. I figure that is plenty of weight to uh, hook up the winch and give it a pull test. And I'll let you know exactly what I think of this winch. So, let's do that. Okay, guys, let's get some of this cable out. You're going to want to turn the free spool until you hear a click, and then you're good to go. All right, let's pull out some cable. And then of course when you start to uh, go and pull, you got to lock that again. There it is. Let's do it. Well, that completes my install and pull test on the HD 3,500-pound winch made by Can-Am. My first impressions on this winch, it's got a real good, durable feel. It's got a solid casing around the uh, winch, and, of course, the pull power, it felt great when I was pulling the uh, Ford 150 that was in neutral. So I don't see that this will be any problems to have in the field if I ever need a winch. So, yeah, guys, if you're new to this channel, subscribe to my channel. If this video helped you in any way, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. We'd love to have you guys a part of the channel. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you on the outside. You guys take care.